Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Dollar Bill, and today I wanna to do yet another analysis of a population pyramid. Today I wanna to take a look at Russia's population pyramid and just kinda of show you some of the interesting and maybe perhaps disturbing uh, parts of Russia's history and how it reflects in its demographics. Now in a previous video, I analyzed the United States population pyramid and show you how the United States had a relatively interesting but yet also noticeable population pyramid when it came to speed bumps amongst speed bumps amongst economic growth that have been reflected. For example, with Gen Xers, where you saw a slight constriction of population growth in the 70s and 80s as a result of stagflation and the continuing decline of population growth in the United States as we are experiencing our second once-in-a-lifetime event, which almost sounds dumb when I say it, so we should just call it uh, just an event at this point because we seem to be having these once-in-a-lifetime events happening every every decade uh, on the clock every clock so on and so forth now let's take a go back and look at Russia's population pyramid and let's start back in the 1950s and we can see a very interesting trend emerge here just right off the start for starters if you look at it uh, women in Russian society in 1957 to present represent a higher percentage of the population than the men and this already shows you that a major historical event has happened, particularly in the age groups of the of the mid to late uh, people of mid to early mid to late twenties and thirties, as a lot of men died in the war fighting against Nazi Germany five years prior. This also affects the bottom of the pyramid as the population growth here receded as a result of a large large population of men dying on the front and then not coming back into Russian society and having children later on. And this is the first major problem that Russia experienced, and that was heavy, heavy casualties during World War II. Now, the sacrifices of the Russian men and of the Soviet citizens in general and other Soviet republics and their men and women should not be forgotten and should be respected. However, it should not go without acknowledging the fact that communism in of itself and Stalin's brutal policies and lack of intelligence gathering before the start of the war heavily contributed to the losses on this front. And as valiant as they have fought, many of these casualties could have been mitigated and Russia would have had a much smoother population pyramid. And as we talked before previously in a demographics video, Russia would have had a population of 500 million if it were not for the collapse of the Russian Empire, heavy casualties during World War II, and consecutively the collapse of the Soviet Union, which you can see here in the decline of Russia's population right around the 90s, which is the second major event that you could take a look at here, and that is the collapse of the Soviet Union. Again, communism is built to fail, and Russia showed us exactly why, and the demographics bear it out. As I said, the demographics here still reflect the legacy of World War II, which it never fully recovered. And But you could see that the Russian population pyramid started to recover in the 70s and the 80s towards a more healthier uh, growth. And of course, you can say in the 50s, there was definitely a boom era where people, where people definitely had a lot of kids coming back after the war trying to repopulate the nation and rebuild. But a lot of the population growth was largely due to the fact that Russia had an increased life expectancy during the Soviet Union times as better access to health care uh, and resources was made available. Though not as good as the United States, it was still comparable and it gave Russia the justification that it as a superpower at that time. However, the collapse did not help Russia's demography as we see later that it narrowed completely in the it is reflected here during the 90s, during the collapse of the Soviet Union. And it's hard to have family or have kids or do anything in those times if you don't know what the future of your country or your being in that country is going to look like, especially when the country that 10 years or 20 years prior used to be a combination of 15 different countries and now just one. And a lot of Soviet former Soviet states, such as Ukraine, show similar demographic trends. And some, some a little better, some a little worse. In case of Ukraine, their population is set to almost have from its current points. And at the turn, this is what's interesting about Ukraine, in the turn of the turn of the 90s, that it had a population of 51 million, almost as much as France. But as said, these two countries have went different ways. And a variety of different factors, including economic output, corruption. Lack of, I mean, said, economic political stability may play a major impact. 
Now, when it comes to predicting Russia's population pyramid in the future, this one is truly a gargantuan task. Simply because Russia's history is, if anything, it's not predictable. And a lot of Russia's history is dictated by a lot of the whims of its leaders, who for one reason or another tend to assume semi-tyrannical authority, and actually let's not even be kind here, tyrannical authoritarian roles as did Stalin, as did his successors, as did everybody else in the last 100 years and well before that. The only difference now is, is we have a society that is much less resilient than it was 100 years ago because it doesn't have its sheer demography to rely on for a cheap labor force and for the defense of its sovereignty and its borders, which might become a major issue in Russian society going forward. And this is reflected in the demographics here very well. And if these trends continue, Russia will see a loss of about 20 million people before the end of the century, and its population pyramid will match closely to that of the United States at that same time. The only difference here, though, that I can see is that the population growth has happened in the last decade. And, and unlike a slimming demographic that you usually see where you have where we have in other societies, Russia has expanded over the last two decades, showing that people in that society are at least willing to uh, to increase the population and have kids. And Russia is definitely more of a traditional society. And if it rediscovers itself with its traditionalism and calls back to some kind of a semblance of the imperial self that it used to be before communism, then it can find itself again. Uh, I'd say this is between 25 and 50% chance of happening in Russia. And there's a 50 to 25% chance that it does not happen simply because Russia again is ruled in an authoritarian state by a by somebody who did exactly as his predecessors did, assume power and then eventually create a, a catastrophe when that person does go away. In this case, it's Vladimir Putin. And at some point, Putin will no longer be in power and he will create a constitutional crisis. If not, a constitutional crisis or a crisis of just Russia's existence might come to him before that as the living conditions and the standards of the Russian people are not being met by its current government, and the demographics do truly reflect that. So anyway, this has been a quick rundown of Russia's really interesting and disturbing population pyramid, which very clearly shows the events of the last century in within the data, and even still to this day, you can clearly see that there is a major disbalance between men and women, especially as they get to the older ages, as Russian men, by the looks of it, do not tend to live very long, and a lot of that can be attributed to social behaviors, of which vodka plays a huge part. Anyway, if you made it this far, really appreciate it. I always have fun playing with population pyramids. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll take talk to you later.